And that's the reason I think we ought to just lay hold of God in a very definite way today about these things that concern us, that we feel deeply. And as you look about you today, friend, don't be discouraged. Don't faint. Please don't faint. Pray. That's what we're to do in days like this. Have you prayed about the situation today? Have you prayed really for the President of the United States? Doesn't make any difference who he is. Pray for him, because he's making a lot of decisions that affect us today and have to do with the climate in this country and abroad. Now, he gave another parable here. It's a parable about a Pharisee and a publican. He spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. And you'll never get anywhere praying like that, by the way. A great many people pray down, you know, to other folk. They go to the Lord. They say, oh, brother so-and-so, he's in a bad way. He's departed from the Lord. Bring him back and bring this dear woman back and bring that. What about you? Pray for yourself, friends. We need to pray for ourselves, lest we be tempted. Ye that are spiritual, restore such a one, the spirit of meekness, lest what? Same thing happen to you. So we need to pray for ourselves, too. Now, here is the parable, and I think he drew it from real life. And I do not know who the publican is, but I think I know who the Pharisee is. We're going to come to him in the 19th chapter, and that's Zacchaeus. I think he was the publican that's here. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. And I love the way the Lord Jesus said that, and I think everybody smiled. He prayed with himself. He didn't go into the, the temple to pray to God for anybody. He went into the temple to pat himself on the back and tell himself what a smart fellow he was. And if I may revert back to the nursery rhyme, he reached in his thumb and he pulled out a plum and he said, what a smart boy am I. That's the Pharisee. Now notice, listen to him. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Believe me, in my book, he's a bigger sinner than all this crowd that he listed here. And he's worse sinner than the publican. That's what our Lord is saying. And notice what he did. He's a religious phony, by the way. And he went through religious exercises. He says, I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Oh, is he a nice boy. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And that poor publican stood away off. And actually, he didn't say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You see, when that man was a publican, he couldn't go to the mercy seat in the temple. That was denied him. He had no part there. He was shut out from it. And what he's saying to God is, Oh, God, make a mercy seat for me, a poor publican, to go to. And we're going to find out the Lord did just that thing, and he told a publican about it, and it'll be Zacchaeus. And I'll go in more in detail when we get over to the 19th chapter, and we're going to be there, by the way, next time. But here is the contrast between these two. And he asked the question, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. And I suppose the biggest stumbling block that all of us have is ourselves. I think the greatest hindrance today to being saved is self, because the man thinks he's good enough to be saved and he doesn't need to be saved. And the greatest hindrance today to Christian service is the reason God doesn't use a great many talented people today. To begin with, he never gave them a gift that they think they've got. They have arbitrarily attempted to use a gift. Now, I know a woman that wants to sing. She's determined to be a soloist. A young woman, she's taken music from about everybody. And I don't know much about music, but I know one thing, she can't sing. And yet she persists in it. 
and she feels like she's got a wonderful voice, and she doesn't have. And may I say that she could serve God some other capacity. I don't know what it would be, but she certainly could, because she is a Christian. I think God's given her a gift, but that gift just does not happen to be singing. You see, Lord, I'm a singer. Now, I want you to help me out. Or, Lord, I'm a preacher. I want you to help me out. Well, Lord, it's not that. Lord, I'm a sinner. <laughs> help me out. Show me what you want me to do. That's the important thing. That's the all-important thing. You see, self gets in the way here. Paul said that he saw within his flesh there was no good thing and that what he wanted to do, he didn't do. Who got in the way? The devil? No, Paul got in the way. That old nature that we could label Saul, you see. What a marvelous thing that he does here. And then our wonderful Lord here. And, oh, isn't he wonderful in this chapter? I think he had them all laughing. <laughs> they all were laughing. It's wonderful to be with him. And notice now, children love to be with him. And they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. Even the disciples said, Oh, don't bring the little children to them. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer the little children to come unto me. Forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. That is a tremendous thing. <laughs> that little one dies in infancy. You can be sure of one thing. Our Lord said that his, not his angel, his spirit is before my Father in heaven. He says here, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. You remember he'd already said something about offending these little ones. And he said, It'd be better for you that a millstone was hung around your neck. You see, the little one will follow you. The little one actually thinks you're God. Do anything you want them to do. Has complete trust in you. God have mercy on you if you don't bring them the right way and bring them to God. He said, Suffer the little one. Let them come to me. Don't try to keep them from coming to me. And they would normally come to him. Oh, you say, but you say they have a fallen nature. They sure do. But you see, that little one <laughs> hasn't reached the age of accountability. And the only decision it can make is the decision that's suggested to it. But that's the nature of the little child. And then the little one grows up and develops that little will of his own. Then that's when the trouble begins, is it not? Our Lord says, let them come to me. Now we have here the instance of this rich young ruler. And the Lord Jesus loved this man. May I say that it's another very wonderful story. And I'm just going to touch it for the simple reason. We've had it in Matthew and we had it again in Mark. And one thing that we'd like to say about this young man is that our Lord made inquiry about the young man's conduct. You know, the Ten Commandments are divided into what's known as the pietus and the probatus. The pietus is a man's relationship to God. The probatus is a man's relationship to man. Well, the very interesting thing is, this is the life of this young man. And this life of this young man was a good life, by the way. He kept the part of the commandments that related him to man. And the very interesting thing is that this young man could pass on those first ones. But what about his relationship to God? That was his problem. He demanded that the young man put Jesus first. That's what he's saying. And he had riches, and he'd been putting those first. And he showed the young man the impossibility of man to save himself. You've got to give up everything and come follow me. And in spite of all of that, Jesus loved this young man in spite of the fact he would not follow him, and he'll love you. Well, who is that young man? I do not know who he is. He may be you today. I don't know. But he loves you. I do know that. And let me just read this. A certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? 